Hi, my name is Nate Jones. I'm a technician here at IT Supplies, and we wanted to create this video for you to show you a simple workflow on how to get awesome prints on your t-shirts using the Epson F2000 direct to garment printer. In this video, I'm going to show you the four key steps in order to get those awesome prints. It starts with having great pre-treatment coverage, having the correct settings on your garment creator software, loading the t-shirt the best way on your garment platen, and finally, how to finish and cure your t-shirts. With the Epson pre-treatment, all I need is a one-to-one -one ratio of distilled water and their pre-treatment solution. And you'll see it looks almost like a watery glue. And now I'm just using a foam roller and a plastic paint tray that you can find anywhere, department store or Walmart. And basically I'm just loading the foam roller with enough pre-treatment solution so it's not dripping or soaking. I just want to give the shirt a nice, good first layer. And the method here is that WM method, that the same method that you would use is just like you were painting a wall in your house. It helps you overlap your strokes, gives you a nice even coverage to get in between the, any wrinkles as you can see already forming and giving yourself the best coverage you can in the area that you need. And now you only need to pre-treat these dark t-shirts and the shirts where you want to print white ink. Epson's pre-treatment is only designed to work with its white ink, and so you don't need this on light color t-shirts. Now I really only try and do this in two passes. The reason for that is I don't want to oversaturate my t-shirts because actually having too much pre-treatment can also reduce your print quality overall. What I do want to make sure is there's nice even coverage right where my image is going to be. I don't need to pre-treat the whole shirt. The other important thing to know is I use my finishing stroke horizontally because what that does is it helps the fibers in the pretreatment not only get into the shirt where I couldn't get it vertically, but I'm also going the direction of the print head. And what I mean by that is the print head is going to be printing over the t-shirt horizontally. So I want the, the shirt threads and the solution and the, the eventual coating of pretreat to be in that final direction going horizontally. It just, we've noticed it helps just with the overall print quality of the shirt. So this is a nice pre-treated shirt. From now, I can take it to my heat press and press it out to dry it out. I can hang dry it for a few hours or overnight. Um, or I can also, if I had a tunnel dryer, I could put it through a tunnel dryer and uh, dry that in a matter of minutes. So it's up to you how you want to dry these. We just recommend that you keep them out of direct sunlight and that you use them within a few weeks um, and that you try and not bend or scratch or scrape them as it could affect the layer of that pretreatment. To load a t-shirt on the Epson F2000, you have to first remove the metal hoop. Then you should double check the height of your platen to make sure it matches the garment that you're using. For most t-shirts, like the one I'm using, we recommend it at a 1 or a 2. If your platen is too high, it can interfere with the laser sensor and it'll be rejected and you'll have to reset. If it's too low, you will suffer print quality issues. So try and have it as high as possible. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to actually load the t-shirt on the platen. I do what's called the sleeve method. We open up the t-shirt, surround the platen, slide it forward, make it as even as possible, and bring it back until the collar is about two finger widths away from the edge of the plat. That ensures that the metal hoop will not interfere with the collar and vice versa. I flatten it out as much as I can, look for any pieces of lint or anything that might get in the way, and I add the metal hoop. You want to press down firmly to tighten and weigh the shirt down as much as possible to stretch out any other wrinkles. Then I'll tighten at the four corners just to make sure I've removed as many wrinkles as possible. You should feel the ridge of the platen all the way around here. And that's how you load the t-shirt. Here we have Garment Creator, which you should be familiar with. I'm going to open and import my sample file and I'm going to quickly lay it out just the way I want it, top and center. 
Now, the things that we can change here are the print quality settings, the print direction and speed, ink density, and how we manage the white pixels and the white ink. For this print, I'm going to maximize my color print quality, which will slow down my speed, but it'll give me the best precision for my ink dots. For my white print quality, I'm going to leave that at level 2. I could add another layer of a white underbase, but I think for this shirt, one is going to be just good enough. I'm going to leave my print direction at bi-directional to give me the highest speed that I can. And now for this ink density. I'm not really sure what the Hanes Nano t-shirt that I'm using needs for the best ink density setting. So what I'm actually going to do first, before I even print this tree, is I'm going to do this print chart. Now when I click this, it's going to say, do I want to perform a chart print? I want to say yes. It's going to send a job, as you can see here, to your printer. Lay down a pre-treated black shirt and then press the blue print button. It's going to print a pattern that you'll see here that'll show you the best ink density that the shirt requires. Now what this shows is with our minus 50 to plus 50 ink density settings, we can compare to how this shirt handles the ink and how much extra or negative density we can add or subtract to create the best looking color and print overall with our t-shirts. As you can see, the color ink density does not improve after 0%, so I'm going to leave that at 0. However, the white ink does improve somewhere between the 30% and the 50% mark, so I'm going to actually set that to 40%. Now I know that my t-shirt needs 40% more white ink to show a good quality print. In my white management, I want to make sure that it reads white parentheses design. That way it will include the white ink that is shown in the design, such as the branches and the main trunk of the tree. I also want to reduce the white area by two pixels. Sometimes the white underbase can bleed out from under the color and give you this white halo effect. What this does, it trims back that white underbase by two pixels to kind of reduce that halo effect. I want to make sure that my under white is on so it does in fact print that white under base. And now my shirt is ready to print. Now that the print is finished, remove the hoop, and the best way to take the t-shirt off the platen is to grab around and over the shirt, grab the shirt by the shoulders, and slide it off. Since we're facing the shirt, it's a lot easier to just lay it down on your heat press. Smooth out any wrinkles that you can. And you have to be very careful with the parchment paper. Once you lay it down, it needs to stay in place because the ink is still wet and it's very possible that you could smudge your image. Now that it's in place, I can swing back my heat press and press it down all the way. Now for an image of this size with white ink, I want to have it pressed for about one minute. Keep press, swing it away, and this paper should just come right off. No ink residue left on it. The shirt is nice and smooth to the touch. I don't notice any fibers or bad wrinkles that I pressed into it. So this is a great t-shirt print. In this video, we've shown you the four key steps on how to make awesome prints on your Epson F2000 directing armor printer. In the comment section below, please leave us feedback on this video and leave
leave us any t-shirt making tips that you might have, whether they're successful or unsuccessful. Thank you for watching and choosing IT Supplies. See you next time.